Hey there, Chris Wise here. Right now, I'm on tour with Ace Frehley, and this is my lovely rig and stage that I get to play on every night. The new Ace Frehley record is gonna be out by the time you guys see this, uh, April 15th, so um, you'll all have heard, most of you hopefully, the new Ace Frehley record, Origins 1, Volume 1. Well, it was my ex-bandmate, Johnny Tempesta from The Cult. Um, called me and said, hey, Ace needs a guy for the day for his new DVD shoot behind the player. And he had all these other guests, uh, but no bass player, so I got thrown in, happily so, and uh, had a blast. And we stayed in touch a little bit and kind of we came, came through again through Matt Starr. So that reconnected us for Space Invader all the way up into you know, this tour, so 2016. So it's been a year and a half or so. That's a really difficult question because they're all really excellent. Uh, Thin Lizzy came out great with Emerald. Being Irish and uh, born and raised in New York, proud to be an Irish, that's a special one and we do that live. The other obvious one is Paul Stanley's track, Fire and Water. I'd say those two right now, but I'm also on Parasite and Cold Gin and they're two of my favorite songs. So like, it's a really difficult question. Essentially, Owl was an extension of my New York bands. Um, and I kind of put off my own original music. I, I felt, in a certain sense, being busy with my career. And I also had my own style of, of playing upright bass and approaching my music, which there's no outlet for, you know? I mean, uh, so I created the outlet. And that's essentially what Owl is. I, I get to express my kind of style and my songwriting. There's odd meters and uh, exotic scales and, and all that, and it sounds very mathy in a way to people when you talk about it, but it's a very primal punk attitude sometimes behind it. So um, I, I'm very rock and roll, even though I like to get sophisticated. Well, a funny story about Owl, I brought the song Rover to my bandmates, Dan Dinsmore and Jason Mazillas. And uh, I think Jason in particular was like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, I'm serious. And it was an Irish Celtic sort of boyhood point of view of going to Ireland with my Aunt Tina. Um, and so I wrote a song about it in a very uh, old fashioned way. And I put a gypsy jam ending on it, which was uh, very, very much like in a gypsy sort of scale. <laughs> um, and essentially that became like a gypsy jam at the end of a very bar saloon like song about a little boy going to Ireland with his Antina. And um, so that was really special. I'm wearing her ring now, she passed and uh, she's always with me. I came home with my tail between my legs back to New York from Hollywood, California after about a year out there. And uh, she was integral in pushing me back out to Hollywood. She was like, you're absolutely going back here's some money, I don't want to hear about it, and you've got what it takes. So um, when you get that in life, that's really special, especially when you're feeling insecure and sort of, uh, you know, the new kid in town in Hollywood. That's a big town to get acquainted to and with. So um, getting that vote of confidence from someone throughout your career can be a big deal. Yeah, well, one of my first early breaks, which was a, like really a very cool, credible one, it was kind of an indie level band, but it was uh, Paul Demore from Tool, uh, it was an early Hollywood experience, and he bought me my first Electric Upright, which I feature in Owl. Essentially, uh, Paul Demore, I think, giving me that vote of confidence, having the Tool background, and then I was the bass player, you know? And then not only that, I'm buying you an Electric Upright bass. That was really cool. Careful what you wish for, but I, I, you know, it's like if, if you could, spend some time with Jim Morrison as the bassist of the band, pushing the envelope a little bit, maybe if they accepted the bass. And I always wondered what the doors would be if they survived and, and had, the, uh, the, had Jim get healthy or whatever needed to happen. I would have loved to, to been their bass player. Maybe pulled out the bow and, and like really been what the doors, you know, you know, jumped into what they are. I feel like I'm sort of that to a certain degree anyway. You know, like I was so influenced by them, you know, and his voice. So uh, it'd be great to play with that kind of singer, but I'm sure it could be a little complicated too at times. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if you'd make every show or whatever would happen there, but it would be fun. 